none other have your way in this place show us the way we must go the things we must do we do not only want to serve you here on earth we want to dwell with you in heaven so God my father impart in us that grace that will prepare us to meet with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Speak through me and bless your children. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God is helping us these days that from different parts of the world people follow our service. As I'm talking with you now, there are brethren in Togo that are following this service. And in different parts like that. The good thing is that they also share comments of how they felt with what they had. My prayer is that God will help that on that day when we get to heaven, while we here we know one another, there will be some other people that will come to us and say, you may not have met me before, you have been a blessing to me. May God help us to make it to the end in Jesus' name. This morning I want to share with you from 1 John chapter 2 in verse 28. First John chapter 2 in verse 28. At this time, John the beloved apostle 
was becoming very old. And he gave this word to encourage the church, the believers. In 1 John 2, in verse 28, he says, And now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Today is 28th of February, which means February is over today. The new year is going, and your age is on the move. The coming of the Lord is very close. If there is any time the church will be reminded of the need to be prepared, it is now. Even the happenings around us, that the way people disappear is becoming alarming such that calls us to know that we should be prepared anything, anytime. And now little children abide in him that when he shall appear we shall have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Which means when Christ shall come some will confidently come into his presence while some others will have reasons to be ashamed. Why will they be ashamed? They'll be ashamed because they are disappointed. Ashamed because they have not lived befitting lives that can bring them or present them before the Lord. So he says that we should abide in him. Abide in him. If you ask me what am I sharing with you this morning, I will tell you, do what? Abide in him. Abide in him. If you hope to make it to the end, abide in him. You want the glory of God to be seen in your life? Abide in him. You want life to go well with you. And the promises of God accomplished in your life. Abide in him. In John chapter 15, look at verse 4. John 15, in verse 4. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. When John was saying abide in him, he was merely re echoing what the Lord had said to them before. And he knew that many of his audience had no privilege to have had this first hand from Jesus. That Jesus said we need to abide in him. If we are not abiding in him, we cannot be fruitful. We are like branch chopped out of the tree. You know it will wither. It cannot be fruitful. It's useless. In verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Running the Christian race is not something you do by sheer human power or ability. No, it's grace. If it's by grace, then you need to cling to the source of grace. And the source of grace is Christ. He says, abide in me. 
Because if you abide in me and I in you, then you will bring forth much fruit. He says, without me, you can do nothing. So brethren, time is going. The days are going by. And very soon, the Lord shall come. Paul told the Hebrew believers that he that will come will come and will not tarry. At the appointed time, he will come. But let me say this to you. God's time is not your time. Which means you are not the one to set the time. To say, Jesus, you cannot come now because I'm not ready. No, it's not you. It's not in your power. It's not in my power. It's in his power to decide when he will come. And when he comes, John said, some of us will have confidence before him. And some others will be ashamed. My prayer this morning is that you will be in the rejoicing camp. And not in the sorrowful camp. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Hebrews chapter 13, let me bring you to verse 14. Hebrews chapter 13 in verse 14. He says, For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. This is why we must abide in him. We have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Time will fail me to point you to scriptures letting you know that the world will not continue like this. Matthew 24, Jesus shared with the disciples that the day is coming when these buildings you see, no stone will be left on top of the other. They were shocked and they were surprised. And I want to let you know that we have no continuing city in this place. Paul told the Philippians, he said, our conversation or our citizenship is in heaven, not here on earth. A songwriter sang, I sang this song some years ago. He said, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up far up beyond the skies. Brothers and sisters, I want to let you know this world is not our home. Therefore, if you are holding the world and the things of the world to yourself, you cannot be prepared. Please, I beg of you. It will not be long anymore. It will be over. The Lord will demand your soul and he will ask you what you did to your soul. Do not be like Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. After they had disobeyed God, and God will normally come to visit them at the cool of the day, have fellowship with them. And that day God came at the cool of the day. Adam and Eve, they were not in the appointed place. Why were they not in the appointed place when God came? They were not there because they were ashamed. They were afraid. And so they were hiding themselves behind trees in the Garden of Eden. Why were they hiding? That God may not see them. But the question is, can you really hide yourself from God? They were hiding. God saw them. God knew where they were, but God came to the appointment venue. And God was there, and he was calling, Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Before then, Adam and Eve will be there waiting for God to come. But this day, they were not there. Something terrible had happened. Rise up, let me speak into your life this morning. 
Whatever the enemy will do to draw you back must fail. Every project, every program from the pit of hell to deny you of the city he had prepared for us. When he said in my father's house there are many mansions I go to prepare a place for you and when I'm through I will come back to collect you. Let me say this, the place is ready. So it is coming to collect us that is left. My prayer is this, that you will not be ashamed when it will come. You will have confidence to stand before him in the name of Jesus Christ. Come with me again. For here, we have no continuing city. But we seek one to come. We seek one to come. We are not going to be here forever. We seek one to come. Yesterday, mommy was showing me something. A man, everything he had in life made of gold. His house made of gold. His bed made of gold. His chair made of gold. His car made of gold. His private jet made of gold. Everything about him, gold. His drinking cup, gold. And it came to pass. In fact, I forgot how many mommy was just calling and I was saying eh? she didn't know this is what I'm going to preach today. So she was saying eh, Jaguar, so so number eh, this, so so number this one. Even if his home is car garage and then one day he died. Even if they played the grave with gold, he's only six feet. The only man that rides golden plane on earth. But he came to an end one day. And he has no son. To whom will he bequeath all that? I'm saying this to let you know that we live in a transient world. We are just passing through. We are strangers. We are pilgrims in this place. Whatever you have, whatever you make, you will leave it behind one day. That time you are going to meet him. Whom you may not have served very well. To give account of your life to him. What account will you give? You imagine somebody who lived lavishly here on earth only to end up in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Not for one day, not for one week, not for one month, not for one year, not for a decade, but forever and ever. And all that will have saved him of that embarrassment was embracing Christ as Lord and Savior, repenting from sin, turning away from them, and living by the standard of God. The standard of God does not mean you will not eat, you will not dress well, you will not live in a good home. You will still live in a good home, but then your heart and life is out to get God's will done. For here, brethren, we have no continuing city. But we seek one to come. We seek one to come. My question this morning is, are you looking for that city? The Bible talks of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the host of others. He said, if they were mindful of the city where they came out from, they had opportunities to have returned. But they said, no, we are looking for a city. Who's Builder and maker is God. We are looking for that city. Though opportunities came to have returned, they said, no, we are not going back. My prayer for you this morning, you will not look back. You will not go back. You will not draw back. You will not slow down. You fire on in the name of Jesus Christ. Come again with me to 
First John. Okay, Colossians chapter 3. Let's read from verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1. Do not put your trust on earthly things. They grow wings, they vanish away. I was telling our workers yesterday that in my time as a youth, as a teenager, we were wearing the type of trousers the youths wear today that is so tight and you find it difficult to pull. I wore that as a teenager. Then when I became a youth, it was a different scenario. The trousers we were wearing was keep Lagos clean. Praise God. That very tight one had gone. This very boogie one came. And we have evolved and changed and changed and changed and changed and changed and changed. Now they are wearing that tight one I wore as a teenager very many years ago. And it's latest as far as they are concerned. This world is not stable. If you follow the world, you will not be stable. But look at Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. It says, if you be raised with Christ, you are born again in Christ. And it says, we are seated with him in heavenly places. If you be raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated at the right hand of God. Here we have no continuing city. The city we should look for is the city where Christ is seated. At the right hand of God. That is the place where we shall dwell with him eternally. Verse 2. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. One, look up to heaven. Two, set your affections there. There are many in the church, they are looking for heaven, but their affection, not there. And when your affection is not there, what happens? You will compromise easily. Like Esau, you will sell your birthright for any reason. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Verse 3. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. If you are born again, you are no more of the world. Translation has taken place. Your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse 4. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him, church where? In glory. Verse 5. Multiply therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Verse 6. For which things sake, the wrath of God comments on the children of disobedience. Anything that is called sin, we must deal with it. He said, mortify. Mortify them means chop them off, cut them off, kill them, destroy them. Expel them out of your life. Brothers and sisters. Because you know poison will kill. If you see a bottle labeled poison, will you touch it? Talk to me now. Anybody who takes the content of that bottle is said to commit suicide. So any believer who goes into sin after being born again is on a suicide mission. Now I want to appeal to you here we have no continuing city. This is not the final phase. There are six phases ahead. Be prepared and make a wise choice. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
in 1 John chapter 2, verse 17. 1 John 2, 17. Sorry, please. 15, 15. 15 to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Look at our nation, for example. Some people cannot live in their own village again. Some mothers stronger than them have sacked them. Some people cannot go to the same river from where they used to draw water, fetch water before. Because some people have taken over and they have barricaded and they said, if you come, you die. Is this the world you want to die for? Look at the security situation. That everybody live in fear, whether in the city or in the village. And you wonder why authorities have not arrested the situation. That's the world for you. Here we have no continuous city. We are looking for one to come. Therefore, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Do not sell your heart. Sell your life to them. There are people who are ready to die because of material things. It's not necessary. We used to sing this song as young believers. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. That's not where I'm going. This other version. You take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You take the whole world, but give me Jesus. I'm satisfied. I am satisfied. I wish to satisfied. Are we still satisfied? Or we look at others and we think they are enjoying and we cry, we weep, we are jealous. And then we charge God foolishly. God, look at so and so, look at so and so, look at so and so. And here I am, serving you day and night. I go for night vigil, I go for that vigil, I go for this service, I go for that. And what have you done for me? You haven't done anything. David said, a time came he was jealous when he saw the prosperity of the wicked. He said his leg almost slipped until God opened his eyes to see the reward of the wicked. And when he saw the reward, ah, he came back in repentance. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lusts of the, eye, of the flesh, the lusts of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of where? The world. See, all that is in the world, the summary of all is lust of the flesh. The world lives for the flesh. Lust of the eyes. The world go mad after what they can see. The pride of life. Let them say I am the one. That has all the summary. He says it's not of the father. It's of the world. Verse 17. And the world passed away. And the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God. What did he say? Abide it forever. Abide it forever. Abide it forever. 
let me show you some few things that will help us. We have seen in Colossians we should deal with the flesh. Do not allow the flesh to overcome you. Conquer it. Jesus said if your right hand will cause you to sin, what did he say you should do? Cut it off. Conquer the flesh. If there is a friend in your life that has turned to a messenger of Satan, separate yourself. Separate yourself. If there is a business that is taking heaven from you, separate yourself. Separate yourself. Whatever opportunity, if it's not to the glory of God, please run for your life. The devil will not give you on one hand and allow you go free. As he's giving with one hand, he's taking from the other. If he gives you ten naira, he will take a thousand from you. That's the way he operates. Nobody ever worked with him that ended well. And the world passed away. And the loss thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Hebrews 13 again. Verse 14. Hebrews 13. Verse 14. For here we have no continuing city. But we seek one to come. My question is, are you seeking for the coming kingdom? Hello, are you seeking for the coming kingdom that Jesus is bringing to us? Are you seeking that place he has prepared where he said we'll dwell with him forever? Maybe you are living in Abuja squatting, but a mansion is prepared if you are born again. Never mind. Five minutes, what is five minutes? A minute in heaven. You will not remember what you have gone through in this world. Is it persecution? Whatever, you will not remember again. Because the joy, the bliss of the kingdom, wonderful. Be prepared, please. Verse 15. Verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. How? Continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Brethren, he spoke of we offering sacrifice of praise to God. If you are seeking the kingdom, this you must do. Why must I do this? So that you stir up yourself and you set your heart on fire. You set your heart on fire. I've discovered that when your gas burners are on, no flies come around. But when the burners are not burning, that's when they come and they perch on your pot. So, set your heart on fire by continually giving him praise, giving him worship, having relationship, fellowship with him. And by doing that, his anointing rubs on you, his unction rubs on you, his presence wells up around you, and it becomes impossible for the enemy to penetrate. It's a sacrifice. Why is it a sacrifice? Many things will want to take that from you. The first day I read it, Thessalonians, Paul said in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I said no. You cannot give thanks always. There are sometimes you are not happy. How can you thank God when you are not happy? But time and experience have taught me that we must learn to give thanks always. Set your heart on fire so that there is no room for the enemy to hang around, you are too hot for him to handle. Sacrifice that. And number two, 
verse 16. But to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is, what do you see there? Well pleased. The first sacrifice is unto God. Give him praise. The second sacrifice and the third is to men. He said, do good, then do what again? Communicate. Do good, you can understand that very well. Communicate. He's talking about we helping people, wiping tears away from the faces of people, giving them hope in life that all is not lost, all is not gone. God has the best for us. And because you believe he has the best, take this little from me to do good and to communicate. He said, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is what? Well pleased. When you are preparing for heaven, tell yourself, all I have is not for me alone. It's not for you alone. There is love in sharing. There is joy in sharing. And then you are pleasing God in sharing. Not just sharing. Helping to meet needs. In those who are terribly in need. You are your brother's keeper. You are your sister's keeper. Help somebody to steadfastly continue on this race. Say to yourself, while I'm alive, while I'm available, I will not see a child of God draw back because of the needs of this life. He says, with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Which means every time you do good, he records it. Every time you communicate, he records it. And you know, God will not owe any man. And nobody can outgive God. He said, Good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over, will he bring back into your bosom? Using men to get that done. Praise God. I made a sacrifice one day, very painful to me, because it touched me seriously. And I said, God, I've only obeyed your word. I do not know how I will survive now. And that very day, somebody gave me a call and said, send me your account number. I said, please, explain where. You said, I can't, is it church account number or my personal account? He said, I need your personal account number. Then later I called and said, I also still need the church account number. Not long I had beckon, 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 and I checked. My heart jumped for joy. When you do good to somebody, especially the person that is in need, his heart jumps for joy. That joy is, hey, God, thank you. And because you have made somebody who shouldn't have been saying thank you because of the situation to say, God, thank you, the Bible says that sacrifice is well pleasing to God. I will not tell you how much they put into my account. But it made me happy. With such sacrifice, God is well pleased. When we please God, God will show you he's pleased. And in showing you he's happy, aha, your joy has just started. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 17 Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for the watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. This place is talking about loyalty. In the church, loyalty. Obey your leaders. And in this church, we have leaders at different levels. 
Obey your leaders. Submit yourself. And let me say this. If you do not have people around you who can speak into your life, that's not a good life. There must be people you respect. There must be people you honor. There must be people who you submit to, who can speak into your life so that when you are going astray, they can tell you, hey, come here. What is wrong with you? Praise God. I was on phone one day. I said, hello, sir. I'm all right, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. And the person by my side, sir, daddy, you also say, sir? And I said, yes. Praise God. You are not there yet. Do not allow pride destroy you. Humble yourself. Learn to be meek. Let there be people who can speak into your life. Who watch over you. When they hear anything about you, they will not murmur. They will not grumble. They will not gossip. Rather, they will call you. I want to see you. And you will meet. And you will address it. If all the people around you are those who cannot speak into your life, you are the only one speaking into their lives, you are in trouble. Loyalty. In our groups, loyalty. God is watching everything we are doing. Even in your place of work, be loyal. I senior him, but he's your boss. The Bible says, give honor to whom what? Honor is due. I senior him. In our village, I am from the kingly house. He is from one kind house like that. Is it because they made him a guy here? And you are supposed to call him your excellency. And you get that, you say, Mr. Jude. You are in trouble. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Lord will help us. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Put away pride. Put away arrogance. And anything that will not help you to be your best, please lay it aside. In the church, support this work with prayers. Because we watch for your soul. And our desire is that you make heaven and when I call you and I say, this is what I saw or this is what I had, I'm doing my work. You must submit. Especially when I show you what I'm doing from the scriptures. Come under authority and let's flow together. Let's serve this God. Let's benefit and enjoy him. Let me round up with verse 20 and 21. Verse 20 and 21. Now the God of peace rise up on your feet. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant verse 21 make you perfect. Are you in church? You know why you didn't say amen? You are afraid of being perfect. If you are perfect, you will not take bribe again. And you like bribe. Hello? All those who are accustomed to kick back, kick there, kick there. Hmm. We are looking for another city. Another city. Not this one. Abuja is a beautiful city. But this is not the one. Therefore, hate what God hates. Make you perfect in every good work. To do his will. 
Walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ. To whom be glory forever and ever. And the church shout it loud. Therefore, keep your hope alive. Stay connected to Christ. Be the best you are called to be. Make sure you finish well. Make sure you do what? You finish well. Tell yourself, I will finish well. A man was on the dying bed. A front frontliner. And then the brethren came around him. And they said, Papa, you will soon go. And he said, yes. And he shared some things with them. And they said, sir, how, why are you, how are you leaving us like this? He said, let me tell you. The best that we can ever accomplish in life is that we are in him. That's the best. I'm a president. I'm a director. I am this. I am that. The best in life is that we are in him. And I want to say to you, abide in him. That is the best that any man can ever accomplish in life. Abide in him. My prayer for you is that no man will take your crown. Nobody will take your place in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have not given your life to Christ before, do so now. If you are still falling, arising, playing around with sin, tell him you are sorry. Settle down. We have no continuing city here. My prayer is that when the trumpet sound, all of us will go together. But the situation where some of us are gone and the rest of you see rush to church. Pastor never come. Pastor not go come. Pastor don't go. Uh -uh. Choir not full today. Choir not go full again. Then you look at the elder son. Huh? I mean they go meeting. What is going on? Then one bold man will come up and come and knock and try to push that this office. It's already after eight. So service not go start. And you succeeded in pushing the door open. That is not there. What has happened? And before you know what, the news is flying all over that some people have disappeared. And then you are now, ah, ah, pastor preached to that the day is coming, people will disappear. Is that what has happened? Oh yes, it has happened. May you not be caught unawares. <laughs> Lift up your hands to God. Until I reach my home. Until I reach my home, I will never, never stop my journey halfway, halfway until I reach my home. Let me hear you say, I must finish well. Oh God, I receive grace from you to run this race and finish well. In the name of Jesus Christ, make it your prayer. well I will finish with Jesus nobody will take my place nobody will take my crown I will not look back I will not stop my journey halfway I break away from any and everything Struggling to draw me back. Break away. It's your responsibility to do. 
He will pour grace on you to get it done. If you've not given your life to Christ before, please do so now. Jesus, I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. I am sorry I've been a sinner, but now I'm coming back to you. Have mercy. Forgive my sins. Receive me and make me a child of God from today. I promise you, I go back no more. Pray that prayer and believe God. Your life will not remain the same again. Everything will go well. His glory will surround you. Grace will be poured upon you. Favor will be your new name. Allow God to have his way in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, let these words go down well in every one of us. Let your purpose be accomplished. One thing we desire, Father, is that when all this is over, may none of us be missing from your presence in your kingdom in the name of Jesus Christ. What it takes to be there, we yield ourselves to you to fulfill in our lives. And help us, O God, never to corrupt our ways anymore, but to stay close to you and live to your praise and to your glory. Thank you, my Father, to you be the glory. I pray that there will be divine visitation to every one of us so that life is made better than ever before in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.